Alice. All right, well, it seems as though, sorry about that, everyone. We've been chatting to Alice over Skype. We communicate to Juma over the phone. Uh, we've stopped off at a herd of the different antelope that you see out here, one of which being the Thompson's gazelle, which I have to say are one of my new favorite creatures. They are absolutely bizarre looking. They're tiny. They're about half the size of an impala, I would say, or just a little bit over half the size of an impala. But it's their horns that I find so peculiar. They've got these long, strange shaped horns. And the males obviously have quite a long set of horns, like this one. But it's another example out here of a female having horns as well. And this looks like it's a bachelor group, so I can't see any females at the moment. But they've got these tiny little spear-like horns that stick out out of the top of their head. Most impressive, though, are the impala rams. Everybody told me that they were bigger. But I think it's something that you have to see in real life. I've seen pictures of them. I think it's something that you have to kind of get to see in real life before you get an idea of just how massive they are. Those horns are... It, it's actually really disconcerting when you're so used to South African Impala to see them here with their massively wide horns. I would say they're double the size of our Impala in South Africa. And that, of course, is because impala here, unlike owls, don't have a strict breeding season. So on Juma, you've been watching the impala chase each other around, chase the females around. Here, they're basically on a testosterone high all year round. So they mate all year round, they give birth all year round. And that's created a situation where the males are... It almost looks as though they're basically impala on steroids. The males are massive. And everywhere you go, it's it's strange. Everywhere you go, you don't see the nursery groups. You just see impala of different ages. Cody, hello and welcome. Cody would like to know how long their antlers can grow. Well, first of all, Cody, here in Africa where we have antelope, we call them horns. And the reason that they're different is because... What have you all seen? Oh, I think they've just seen other Thompsons. The reason that they're different is because those horns are made of solid bone. So unlike antlers that can be shed every year, impala horns and antelope horns are made of solid bone surrounded by keratin. And this is as large as they get. This is a very, very big ram. This is as big as they're going to going to grow. I haven't had the opportunity to actually get up close and personal to these impala, but I reckon... Sure, how long would I say that is? The way, if you took it from the base of the horn to the tip, I would say that's about 70 centimeters, maybe even longer. Oh, you know what, they're, they're banded mongoose. Ah, oh, that's what they're looking at. I've been dying to get banded mongoose on camera, but the grass is so long here that it's really difficult. No, I can't see them anymore. Hold on, let me see if I can, I think they might go up onto the ridge. It's just this little sea of tiny animals that sort of flow through the grass. Come on, where have you gone? I need a pair of binoculars. Now, Claire, you'd like to know what my first impression was of the Mara, Mara the Mara, the Mara space. It, it's space like I can't even begin to describe. And it, with that comes a sort of a sense of freedom and being right out in the open and in the wilderness. I think, I think that would be how I would describe it. My first impression of the Mara has just been indescribable in a way. And we're going off in search of a cheetah, apparently, if I could understand where we are and what's going on. While we do that, a Taylor has found a completely different species of giraffe. 